promised land Though there's pain within the plan There is victory in the end Your love is my battle cry When my fears like Jericho Build their walls around my soul When my heart is overthrown Your love is my battle cry The anthem for all my life Every giant will fall The mountains will move Every chain of the past Be broken into Over fear, over lies We're singing the truth Welcome to our last sermon in our Pressing In series here at the Haven Church. Um, I want to start today by being totally honest and saying that usually I love preparing for sermons because I'm a type A personality nerd, Monica Geller, I like things organised, I want them in binders and I really enjoy the journey of researching historical context and looking at ancient liturgy and pushing it all together and, and finding out how it presents in the topic that I've been given. But this uh, topic has not rolled that way. Today's topic is looking at how we press in past adversity. And adversity is one of those topics that I think 
in Christianity, we've often thrown a lot of cliches at. And sometimes we try to squash our struggles or the struggles of other people by quoting scripture to them or giving them a new point of view with their belief system or any of that kind of thing. And I've been really, really worried about standing here today and possibly fitting into that category. I, I just don't want to do that. And I don't believe that that's what God calls us to do either. So all I've done is just sit and pray and pray and read my Bible and just really begged God for some direction with what is his word? What is his direction when it comes to adversity? And in this journey of looking through the Bible and reading some books, I kept coming across this notion of the word altar. And so I just thought I'd start exploring that. And looking at altars, I think it's really easy to perceive the altars of, of, of time past in temples where we've got these beautiful bronze and monuments and that's where these um, priests came and they're in you know royal gala and they're moving through and it's a whole ritualistic beautiful process but altars actually started really messy and grubby and they were hard altars were fashioned out of broken chunks of rock and earth and they were assembled by pressing them together with mud and grit and clay it wasn't pretty it wasn't tidy it was the sort of work that left your knuckles raw and you out of breath and there's a, so many reasons why people built altars there were altars built to honor uh, commemoration with God and covenants and praise and thanksgiving and of course we know that there's altars that are there for forgiveness and repentance and sacrifice or pleading or a whole manner of other words but the one thing that all of these reasons for coming to an altar and building it have in common is that an altar is a place where we experience true connection with God. So God had this this altar notion running around my head. And to be honest, I haven't known what to do with it. So I sort of just shelved it for a bit and, and waited for the next instruction. And I was really lucky to discover a, a version of the Bible recently that I really love. And I begged my husband to buy it for me for Mother's Day and he did. And I've just been pouring through God's scripture and loving the revelation um, of who Jesus is that's coming out to me. And you know, I think there are so many verses in the Bible and so many stories that we could fill a whole series on how to press into God past adversity. But today, I just want to give you two. And I don't want to give you two from a space of, this is what I learned when I became all enlightened on my quest for joy and peace. I'm giving you scripture that has rattled me to my core this week. Um, and I'm still journeying and through. And this scripture is, scripture is based around two key concepts. When we are traveling through adversity, when there is hardship, when there is difficulty, when there is discomfort, whether it is self-made or we are victims of circumstance, there's only two things that God asks of us. And that's transparency and to be brave enough to step into community. And I wanna start in Matthew 4. And I'm reading from the Passion today. In Matthew 4, we get the story of Jesus and he's been led out into the wilderness and is being tempted by Satan. And it is rough. It is physically exhausted and mentally exhausted. And he's attacking his sense of self and he's trying to pull him down. And Jesus endures, but it gets to the end. And I never knew this before. It says, and once the accuser left him, this is in verse 11, angels suddenly gathered around him to minister to his needs. The, the God who came to earth and filled himself with humanity, the God who created the earth went through difficulty and his first point after surviving or trying to push through was to go for community 
He needed people around him. He needed angels to minister to his needs. And I just think, who am I? (laughs) Who are we when we go through difficulty to not be following in the example of this amazing man and how he led with transparency and how he led with vulnerability and he let others tend to him. And that flows into our second verse that I wanna give you today in Galatians. And it's a verse that I'm sure has been used around you a billion times. It's in Galatians verse two. And in the Passion Translation, it says, love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one as we carry each other's troubles. I can't carry your troubles and you cannot carry mine if I don't step into vulnerability, if I don't step into courage and share them with you and then let you tend to me just like Jesus when he struggled as well. And I I think that when we look at all the other stories and all the other records of transparency in this, the holy book, you know, whichever book we're looking through, we're met with this transparency and we're met with community. Whether it was people seeking community with God or whether it was seeking community with those around them, when there's adversity, God calls us in to press into transparency and to press into community. And I get it. Pressing into vulnerability is terrifying. It's really scary. Uh, it's not who society tells that we, sh- we should be. I really believe that there's a real spirit um, that's lying in the world telling us that we have to be doing everything wonderful and we have to be doing it perfectly and we have to be doing it on our own because that's not who we were created to be. And it's not the design that God's given us for when we are struggling. I've been wrestling with this because sharing our difficulties with people is hard. Um, Sharing our difficulties with ourselves and being honest is hard. Adversity is hard and collectively around the world right now is hard. Um, So many people are experiencing really hard things and for a lot of people, the difficulties that they've been ignoring for a long time are really coming to light because we're kind of at home and we're not distracting ourselves. But if we can be brave, and step into that transparency, which is actually God ordained and step into that desire for community. I truly believe that there's restorative power there because it's recorded in here. I wanna be intentional about noting though, that when God gives us instruction and these prophets give us instruction about community and about pressing in, there's no mention of a cure. It doesn't say press into me, connect with those around you and seek guidance and it'll all be better. It says, press in and share your burdens and love and tend to each other and be kind and generous and helpful and supportive and that is where you'll find me. And I feel like personally for me, preparing for this sermon, it's been this revelation of realizing that in order to truly know Jesus, I have to step into this instruction. I have to step into this place of vulnerability with my church, when I am feeling rough and when I need help. And I don't necessarily mean running through the doors and telling everyone all your junk, because that's really not helpful for anybody. But I mean, within your circle of people that help you become the best version of you, there's actually a need to be truly transparent there. Jesus doesn't want us wearing our masks with each other. He wants us being real and I was recently gifted this amazing book by a friend and in one of her chapters, she's talking about the healing that comes when we press in with transparency and when we press in with community. And she was talking about the church and how it offers up messy, inconvenient, gut-wrenching, never-ending healing and reconciliation. She goes on further to quote Brene Brown and she, she says that, I went to church, I went into community, thinking that it would be like an epidural, that it would just take all my pain away. But church isn't like an epidural, it's like a midwife. I thought Faith would say, I'll take away your pain and discomfort, but what it ended up saying was, I'm gonna sit with you in it. 
that's literally our direction from God. When you're feeling in a space of difficulty, when you're struggling, when you're wrestling, when it's hard, the next step is transparency. The next step is pressing into community. And I was wrestling with this and then trying to think about what, you know, what this whole altars notion was that God gave me because we know that we don't make sacrifices anymore. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, but God really placed on my heart that he still desires for me to build an altar for him. And instead of my bricks being chunks of broken earth, my bricks are just parts and passage of my life. And sometimes I'm going to come to Jesus looking for connection. I'm going to come to God looking for connection, just like days of old with these altars, and I'm going to be celebrating. It's going to be Thanksgiving. Um, some days I'm going to be coming to Jesus and looking for connection and it's going to be gross and yuck and hard and there's going to be grief and there's going to be anger, but he still calls me to come and build my altar. And I like to think of these chunks of my life as the bricks and the clay and the mud is now my transparency and my bravery and courage to step into that with community. I don't really know <laughs> if that's made any sense because I don't think there's a cure or comment for adversity. And I'm glad that there's not because there's a million different stories in this book so that a million different people can connect with Jesus in any way. But I genuinely believe that in order to really find Jesus and find a way towards peace and calm, we need to be brave and stepping into transparency and connection. And I don't know if you're hearing this today and it's rocking you and it's making you feel uncomfortable. And I don't know if it's making you feel like you're getting a warm hug, but at either ends of that, of, of those feelings, there's God and there's Jesus. And I encourage you to build your altar I encourage you to get your friends and your family and your loved ones and continue to build your altar and it's messy and it's yuck, but there's connection with God there and there's healing. And yeah, that's kind of all I could muster up on adversity today. I'm wanting to be tender because I know the world is in a hard space, but I'm really grateful for the way that the Lord has led with his own story in the Bible of being transparent and letting other people tend to him and tending to them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you that you love us when our world is in shambles and thank you that you love us exactly the same when our world is on top of the mountain. You're a powerful God and you're a loving God. And I thank you that no matter where we are in life, you are right here with us pushing through. We love you, God. Amen.